It's Sunday morning, we made it to the studio, and I've heard you guys loud and clear. Full ambient track walkthroughs. Let's do this thing. Space ambient, Cybient, chill ambient, dark ambient, down tempo. You name it, at one point or another, I've probably either heard it or produced it. But in my mind, you can separate those two things out into two categories, ambient with beats and ambient without. And lucky for me, I've got two projects that I go by that have all my needs covered. Signs of Life is the more chill ambient, cybient, down tempo project, and Star Terra, where I throw all the rules out the window and focus only on the space ambient, chill ambient, and really get into the gates of space oblivion. And in today's video, we're gonna make an ambient track without beats, full walkthrough, so you guys can learn a couple things about arrangements, composition, and of course, sound design. So, as always, before we start, make sure you guys smash that like button on the way in, subscribe to the channel if you feel called to do so, and let's make some space ambient. All right, so here we are in Ableton Live 11. Now this is gonna be a full track walkthrough, so hopefully this is gonna get you guys pretty much all the way there. Uh, before the mixing stage, but I like to do full track walkthroughs, if anything, just to inspire you guys and watch somebody who's working on music like this to kind of give you guys a little bit of insight and just maybe a boost of self-confidence when it comes to making space ambient music or ambient music in general. It's not an easy genre by any means of the imagination, uh, but hopefully uh, by watching me do this, you guys can gain a little insight. All right, so... I wanna give a shout out at the beginning of this tutorial uh, to the old method that I used to use. I used to use this program called Borderlands made by a guy named Chris Carlson. It was a master's thesis project for his uh, degree at Stanford. And after that, uh, he created an iPad app, which you can still find and download in the app store. It's called Borderlands Granular. Uh, and I'll put the links to his stuff down below in the description. And that program really inspired me back in the day and I'm still sort of using techniques that are based on it. It's a granular sampling environment and you can kind of layer textures on top of each other and create some really cool stuff super fast. And that's how I started a lot of my Signs of Life tracks back in the day, all right? So this is sort of based on that, except we're not using granular. We're gonna use an arpeggiator, a pad, and um, an outboard hardware pedal effect, namely my microcosm, to create this uh, texture that we're about to hear. So. What I'm gonna do is uh, take Riffer 3, and we're gonna start like this. Riffer 3 is feeding a minor scale arpeggio into Serum, and Serum is running a pad that I created for ancient technology called Space Temple, and I've adjusted the attack uh, to make um, one of the envelopes really fast, and the other one is just kind of sitting there kind of slow, but when you start pumping Riffer 3 through Serum, uh, through the microcosm, and I have an audio effect rack, which I'll explain in just a second. It's gonna sound a little bit like this. Check this out. All right. Now that's going through the microcosm, okay? And I'm also giving it a high pass filter here on the EQ. Now what you can do on the pad itself is you can adjust the envelope, namely the attack envelope and get some really cool texture stuff here. You can also adjust the cutoff of the filter. And you can already hear where I'm going with this. As soon as we turn on the reverb or some kind of... It's really bringing out sort of like a note or a texture based on other notes and that scale is just setting the entire mood and tone, okay? So I'm gonna pause that for a second now what I did was I recorded about a minute and a half of that and then put a instance of Valhalla Supermassive on top and this is what we're left with right here. So I'm gonna turn off that. Oh yeah, you can already hear it. There we go, okay. So we're gonna use this as sort of our bass drone, if you will. It's kind of loud. We'll turn it down a little bit. But I, I like to use texture as like key forms of my inspiration. Because I mentioned in a previous video that it's the, it's the tail of the reverb is what's really inspiring to me. And that's how I get going on all my tracks is I sort of like 
put myself in that space chamber, if you will. And then I'm like, okay. And then I start visualizing a world around me once I have that uh, auditory cue in place, okay? So we're just gonna let that play. And again, that's a arpeggiator running into a pad, running through my microcosm, running through a massive reverb, no pun intended there. Uh, and it's just playing on a loop, okay? So now let's think about, now let's think about the, the mood and tone that we wanna evoke. It's important at first to get your, set up your tempo and then set up your key obviously. And then what are you going for, okay? So uh, we're at 71 beats per minute. We're in the key of D sharp minor. And when I, immediately when I hear that tail, when I listen to that reverb, I'm thinking, okay, this is like deep void stuff, right? So I just put my mind way out there and I think, what is possible? You also have to think about the frequency spectrum. When you, when you organize sound, where does that emotional response come from and where does the intellectual response come from? Well, the emotional response comes from the bass, right? So immediately what I would do is I would take something, now that I know that sort of like living somewhere around... It's really hot around 1K. I'm gonna bring in something lower than that. So I'll bring in like a deeper pad and you'll hear the contrast immediately. So I'm gonna bring up something from Anomaly because that's very space based. And we'll tie, uh, let's just pick our one at random. Star Seeker, okay? We'll, st we'll pick Star Seeker. And then we will start playing that alongside each other. Let's check it out. Right, because this this drone is being filtered before it even hits the recorder. And then when you have something that's wide open with the filter, you get that contrast immediately because it's covering all sides of the frequency spectrum, whereas the drone is limited. So now we're off and running, okay? So let's let's create a pad or something and get a good loop going with this one. We'll put that on pause. I'll create a MIDI clip here, and then I will take the fixed grid and turn it off, and I will put the headphone button on, and I'm just gonna hit the right arrow key and start playing some chords, okay? In the lower octave region. Maybe some one note stuff, we'll open up with that. There we go. That's really good. Those more dissonant notes, I like to hold them for just a short amount of time. To reach that one. There we go. And I'll pause right there. Again, I was holding the right arrow key and just sort of drawing some notes in. You can just paint that with a pencil, but I like to kind of give it a little more authentic feel when I'm actually playing it, um, rather than just kind of keying the notes in. I can hit the scale uh, button here and then we'll go to our chosen scale and make sure that everything's all right, it's all lined up. There we go. So all the notes are lined up in there and um, we can adjust the velocities here if we want. Maybe adjust some of those lower velocities. There we go, just like that. All right, I like that. And then again, we can just hit the loop. It's already on a loop, so we can just kind of drag this over. Um, now this is a very long track, right? So now we have the contrast between those two things. I like that, I'm gonna call that Star Seeker. Okay, again, we're just building up texture here at the beginning. So we can have sort of like a canvas. It's almost like putting an initial color down, like a sepia tone. So we can start filling in the details as we go. So before we move any further, like, like let's think about this. What type of journey are you on? 
Are you, are we like in a spacecraft? Are we like literally just discovering a new world? Are we a probe? Are we on a planet? Um, like anything, like this is space ambient. And what I love about space ambient, I was listening to some Martin on static in the car, one of his albums, uh, reflections. It's like a pure ambient album from Martin on static, which is kind of rare. Uh, and I was listening to it today in the car on my way here. And I was like, I was listening to it and I, I thought to myself, even a harmonic can evoke an image. Like that's what I love about ambient music is the subtlest things can evoke images in your mind. And that's what really creates good ambient music is the fact that you have any sound source could evoke an image and it can evoke a place or a feeling. And that's the beauty. And that's why I never get tired of it. That's why it's an endless well of immediacy of imagination. All right. So let's, um, let's now take a, let's now get a, like a real dark bass tone in there. Okay. So we'll pick another one from Anomaly. I know I'm just pulling from these, but these are brand new patches. Uh, you can get them at Material Sound Sets uh, down in the description below. Of course, you guys have heard me talk again and again about Anomaly, but it's so good. This is exactly what it was made for. All right. Oh, that's a little too low. There we go. Yeah, as soon as you start changing the bass note. Mm. I know I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna start writing bass lines. I'm not gonna start writing bass lines just yet, but it's really important to get a feeling of where that bass would live in your mix, right? So I, I can just hit one note. Adjust your gain staging, of course. There's something in there that I'm really feeling. All right, so let's let's try to draw something in now. We're gonna pull it in from the universe, all right? And we're gonna make this uh, 16 bars long because I think that's how long my baseline is. We'll set this to one bar and we'll start drawing some notes in. I don't want to do. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to extend this out. There we go. And then we extend this out. There we go. Just like that. And then these two. Perfect. There we go. Okay. There we go. And because we're at 71 beats per minute, it's going to take it a lot longer for that bass line to fully get there, but that's what's going to set your tempo. And that's what's going to guide the listener through your track. I mean, we could make save this for the end, but I'm really excited about this being somewhere near the middle and just carrying us the rest of the way through the track. So we'll have a bunch of elements that are going to finally, when that bass hits, it's going to be a real big payoff. I love it. It's up the uh, tempo by like three or four beats per minute, 74. There we go. All right, cool. Now what I like to do is bring my tracks a little bit closer to like a Berlin school thing without going over the line. Now what I mean by going over the line is when you start adding hi-hats or, or anything like that, that sort of evokes that like rhythmic feel to it, you're you're pushing it closer, right? To that down tempo territory, but you don't want to go there yet. So you just want to get it right up to the edge. So I'm going to put an instance of serum here. And we're going to call that serum. Call that cobble. Stone. And then we're going to use stokas like we normally do, but because we're at such a slow 
tempo here. Like it's really gonna make some cool sequence things happen, especially when you talk about something being random. So D sharp and let's go natural minor somewhere in here and all of our notes are set, giving the D sharp uh, a lot more chance and a possibility to hit. Let's take off um, the seventh notes here and just build from here up just like we would. And then we're gonna go like this, like that. Make those a medium, that's a medium chance, there we go. Each line should have um, a couple different selections that it can choose from. There we go, like that, okay. And then maybe some higher unexpected notes up at the top. Okay, so let's name that Stokas, S-T-O-C-H-S, and then we're gonna input that right here and put it to Stokas, and then we're going to um, make sure that we have the right patch here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, here we go. Let's turn this down and hit play and see where we're at. Not bad. Not bad at all. Some of those notes in there I could do without, but they sure make for some interesting drama. Oh my gosh, that really excites me. Especially when those bass notes change. See, now my mind is on fire. I'm like, okay, I'm really hearing the forest through the trees here. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right here. So as you can see, just a couple simple moves and we're already way out there. And we just built this track. I mean, it started with that texture and then we added another pad on top of that, laid down a foundation, and then we're already breaking into the intellectual details. It doesn't take much, okay? So now it's up to us to see where we wanna go after this. Because now we have a vibe, right? But we have to bring the audience with us on this journey. So the journey has to start somewhere and then it has to go somewhere and we can't get to that point unless we're, we're fully ready to do that. So, all right, so let's do the 999 trick. I know this was all covered in the previous video, but we're doing a totally different genre of ambient here. So I'm gonna hit uh, record on here. If you guys missed that tutorial, check it out. I'll probably put a card in there somewhere. 999, make sure we remember 74 and then we're going to record this in fast motion. Now we have a completely random sequence that we can pull from. <laughs> I always love this, it's like, what <laughs> are you doing? Well, what I did was, is I just, because it was recording in MIDI, I just uh, hit the gas and put it on 999. And now I don't even need to mess with Stokas anymore because now I have a perfect MIDI clip with all of the notes that I would need um, right here. I could have done that, I could have done it manually. I could have just like painted these in, but you know what? Technology, let's just let it handle it and then you can... now you got it. We're back at 74 beats per minute and there we go. That's a beautiful midpoint. I like it. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about some of those more melodic lead sound. I call them leads. Uh, you might not call them leads uh, in another context, but to me, they're lead sounds, right? So I have four included in Anomaly. If you play this like individually, like you would sort of like this melodic pad or something, like that, right? It's gonna sound like a symphony. That is loud. All right, so let's turn that down and let's go here. I'm gonna make you go one octave higher. All right, and you put that in context. It 
See, sometimes it's just hitting the note that your mind wants to hear, and that's just by playing the right note at the right time. So as you can hear, like, This is space orchestra here, boys. I'm playing this all live. I'm gonna save that. On my push, I'm gonna hit record new. And I've got my performance right there, okay? So that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that has deep emotion. Uh, you can, I did this all just playing this live, right? Improvisation. That's nice. You can either tighten up the timing or not, or leave it loose, and just let the muse follow you where you ever wanted to go. I kind of love that approach. Let's turn down some of those textures here. Lower that bass. That's gorgeous. All right, and maybe we'll bring this in again. We're gonna bring this in towards the end, but then we're going to add a whole nother section to it. Okay, and in this section, we can sort of say, okay, let's just go back to one bar, and then we can uh, pencil in some notes here. All right, we'll change the color here. Let's make it blue so we can see what notes we're hitting. I like that note right there. So I'm gonna hit the headphone button and let's turn off the fixed grid. Hit the right arrow key. The obvious choice would be the octave here. Maybe one higher. Interesting. All right, cool. All right, nice. I like that. I'm gonna hold that out. Okay. And like this. And then resolve it. Right there, that's perfect. All right, cool, I'm gonna turn that down again just so it sits somewhere in the mix that's not too in your face, but it's providing all of that harmonic lead content that we need. That's perfect. And then we'll have this come back at the end too. <laughs> yes. It's like reading the last couple chapters in the book early. I love it. Oh, that's brilliant. We'll bring this out. There we go. See, because we have this uh, top texture on a loop, we can extend it out as far as we want. 
as you can see down here at the bottom, we're almost, we're over 10 minutes. That's gorgeous. Okay, now that we sort of got our, <laughs> we got our, we put the, the cart before the horse here. We, we got our ending part almost pretty much wrapped up. Uh, so let's focus on the beginning here. Let's focus on the beginning of our journey. We're sort of working backwards, but that's okay. Like I said, at the beginning, you can go any different direction that you want. Space is as wide open and anything can happen in space. <laughs> I like to think of it like that. I literally do because if we don't see it that way, then our possibilities become fewer and fewer. We want an infinite amount of possibilities at the start. So we're 20 seconds in and the first major event should happen. We could also bring in another granular type of thing here. So let's open up Omnisphere. Now this is the portion of the video where I don't even know where we're gonna go with this, but you know what? Something cool might happen. And I have that, it's that kind of, that kind of morning that anything could happen, all right? So here we go. Let's uh, take a sample. Let's pull in maybe some of those psychoacoustic, I don't know. I mean, Omnisphere, we've never really covered Omni on this channel. Uh, I do have a sound set for it called Eternia, which is was super fun to make. And uh, you guys check that out if you're interested in some of the work that I did on Eternia uh, material sound sets. And let's just play this. What is this? That's the pad. Magnetic purple bounce. There we go. Oh yeah. Can you imagine, right? So you hit the granular engine and we'll go over here and we'll start looping this. Okay. We'll take the uh, position. All right. Maybe we'll take the spread and smoothing. The grain depth can be um, relative. Let's contrast that to our pad. Like, where's that coming from? I love that. Ooh. Yes, you hear how textual that is? And as you get higher. I like the lower stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay. What? <laughs> It's almost in key. What? I feel like I'm chasing the dragon here. Oh my goodness. Stop it. That is the key, right there. <laughs> we found it! Right there. Somewhere around there. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that. All right, so we're gonna bring that up. There we go. Set it at one bar. Make an eight bar loop out of it. A to Z, one to 10. There we go. Okay, okay. 
Yes. And we can fade that in. All right, let's freeze that. Why not? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I went into that saying, I don't know what's gonna happen and that's what happens, okay? Boom, flatten it out. There we go. Now we have an audio track. We can uh, adjust the uh, gain level on it. There we go. And now we have a 16 bar loop if we want to. There it is. You see, we have a, now we have another texture to play with. There you go. Just like that, all right? This can come in, this can fade out, this can come in, this could be our ending over here. Oh yes. Like you don't know where that's coming from. That sounds like the alien hive in orbit on the other side of the moon. I mean, you're just like, what? Where is this coming from? And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now let's bring in one of those gorgeous sequences. All right, one of those gorgeous sequences. Let's do this. Let's go here. And we're gonna see how well this fits in. The abyss. How how fitting is that? Right? Let's set this to pad bus. Here we go. We might tailor this to our specific needs. And just make this one thing. Oh, yeah. If anything, that's exactly what you want to hear at this very moment to get you inspired to make something like that from scratch. The power of the preset is to evoke the senses and the imagination to the point where you feel like anything is possible. I love it. I love that. Yes. Yes. We can adjust the filter here too. If we just want to focus on So that's the thing about anomalies filters is that you can mold and shape them depending on how you're using them in a certain context. So what we did was we took the, the base notes out of there. We took this out, okay, which is fine. Because for us, what we're looking for is just this. I'm gonna rename that abyss. Oh yeah. Don't forget to save every once in a while. <laughs> I always forget that part. All right, now I'm sure that once the bass hits, we're really gonna feel this. We're gonna feel this, oh my goodness. Okay, so let's now go back in time here and we're going to bring everything around that we started. So we're, we had a lead sound in here. We had this textural sound from Omnisphere. We had the uh, cobblestones lead, the bass sound, the pad, the texture, all of it combined sounds like this. Yes. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Right there. 
See? The beauty of Star Terra Space Ambient. Right here on the Signs of Life YouTube channel. It be like that. Let's make a loop of this and we'll wrap this up with our final thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If this helped you in any way, if you'd like to hear more tutorials and see more tutorials on this channel, just like this one, let me know in the comments down below. This is the ambient channel for the people. <laughs> you guys have been so amazing. In the five months that this channel has been alive, we're almost at 600 subscribers, almost 20,000 views. I'm proud of it. You guys are really inspiring me to keep going. This is my mission and this is my calling. So thank you guys so very much for watching. Truly appreciate it. Get out there and make some music, you guys. This is what it's all about. We're here now, the time is now, and it's never been more important for you to find out who you are as a producer and make some good ambient music. My name is Chris from Signs of Life. It has been my pleasure. As always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. And I will see you all on the other side. Peace.